What is up guys? I am so excited because Car Week is just three days away. Brought the McLaren out today and going to be meeting up with Shmi to drive a very special car. The car is also purple, just like mine. And obviously you guys have guessed it already. It's his Zenvo. I went for a ride in a Zenvo out when I was in England, but finally on American roads where I'm insured on his car, I'm gonna take it for a spin. Let's take the McLaren into Malibu. It is such a gorgeous day today, a perfect day for filming. So I'm headed to Malibu Country Mart, gonna get some food with Tim. Then we're gonna take the cars out into the canyons, go for a drive, then head to Beverly Hills for some car spotting. And then likely in the next video, we're going to Protective Film Solutions. That's actually this evening from 5 to 8 p.m. They've got an insane confirmed attendance. I believe a Valkyrie is gonna be there, a whole bunch of hypercars. It's always a good time. I'm excited. <laughs> this car never gets old. I can't believe I've owned the 600 for more than four years now at this point, and I have never gotten bored with the car. Oh, look at that, it's Zoe 101 school. How's this for a squad? STO, Huracan Evo Spider, GT3, Huracan Storado. Saturdays in Malibu. So I found myself back in the passenger seat of Shmi Zenvo, except now <laughs> we are in my territory instead of his. The same car you rode in a month ago in the United Kingdom, we're now in, in Malibu. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> and, and how did you do that? You put it in the bottom of an airplane it's and been, flew it over here? Indeed, it has been in the belly of a 777. <laughs> it has been flown over, it actually went to Paris, flew from Paris to Chicago to try and make a flight route that could get it here for Monterey Car Week and a hot thing. Um, and then it was trailered across from Chicago to LAX where it came off the pallet. And now we're here. How long does that take? I mean, in theory, the length of a flight, right? It wow, takes a little yeah. bit longer because of the uh, transport we've had to do from one place to the next on a truck, but it's still like a week and you get it there. It's flown over. Well, we are on beautiful Malibu Canyon Road in this ridiculous 1177 horsepower car. And <laughs> Tim is gracious enough to let me uh, get behind the wheel for a little bit. So we're gonna find a emptier stretch of road so it's not stressful with people all around us. And uh, I'll circle back. So this is in race mode, okay? In race mode, this gearbox, I think it's the fastest shifting production car gearbox really? in the world. Really? Wow. But you felt it, you know, if I, if I get my foot on the throttle, it's so, when you're actually under power, under load, just dunk, dunk. Like you think a DCT is fast. Yeah, yeah. It's like boom. <laughs> it's sometimes hard to tell because DCTs are so smooth, it almost yeah. feels like it's faster. And because this has that interruption, you would think maybe it'd be slower, but I know being a race gearbox, it's, it's not slower. Absolutely savage. And this is in IQ power mode. IQ power mode restricts you to 800. Oh. You want only 800 horsepower. <laughs> Otherwise, press the magic button, you've got another 50% and basically 1,200. And you can run it, oh, nice. Ferrari FF. Uh, you can also run it on E85. And that's what, like 1,300 horsepower? 1,360. Oh my gosh. So this car, mine is the first ones ever made that's E85 compatible. I feel like that's not talked a lot about. No, well, the first I... First time I ever heard it was you saying it. Yeah, absolutely. So what they do, which I think is really cool, is they actually make it possible now for the cars they'd already built. Yeah. So the three TSRSs before mine now get that as well, and of course the new ones do, which is really cool. <laughs> you know every one of those shifts has a fireball going off behind us as well. Even at, you know, we haven't been warming up the engine a bunch, I think even now, <laughs> look. Shmoo the cows Shmoo going is, uh, hanging out. <laughs> I bet in the tunnel up ahead, those fireballs are gonna sound pretty ridiculous. I'll tell you what it does is it makes traffic jams interesting. Yeah, 100%. Like, you're, you're I suddenly... Bet the, there's a reason why the Tesla is way farther behind us than all the other cars. It's just... <laughs> it doesn't want to catch on fire. All right, through the tunnel. Cool. Yeah, the Tesla's now three times farther behind. <laughs> Here's something I've actually never seen. He's opened the front, and there is a serious amount of storage space, actually. It's not bad, eh? You release it inside. Oh, that 
That is so cool, the mechanism. So I know a bunch of you have probably already seen the video where we went for a ride in this, which was a very, very cool experience. But for those of you who missed it, we'll go over some specs again. So what I didn't realize until recently, actually, is that the TS in TSRS is for twin supercharged. Exactly. So it's 5.8 liter twin supercharged V8, 1177 horsepower, except it's 1360 yep. with different fuel, 840 pound feet of torque, like 2.7 seconds to 60 in that range. It's one of those traction things, isn't it? A hundred percent. If it was all wheel drive, it'd probably do two seconds to 60. Yeah, literally. The, the interesting thing is the earlier cars, the ST, the mm -hmm. ST1, was the, basically, I think it was a Ford block kind of thing. This is their own engine. And it's one of the craziest things I think people don't give enough appreciation for is that Zembo do all of this pretty much themselves. And the gearbox? Like, yes, even the gearbox. Wow. I, I, I actually filmed a little bit with, with the gearbox with Trolls, the company founder, when we were building this car. But when we, when I was watching them build this car, I should say, and it's fascinating to see how they've engineered everything and how they've basically developed the cars as they go. You know, it's like if you think to the early stages of Koenigsegg and Pagani as well, how it's all been that like development process. A bunch of guys who really know their stuff, just working with what they can. And we were talking about in the previous video, I forget actually if it was on film or not, but that this is kind of like the CCX or the CCXR yeah. Yeah. and what's about to be launched at Pebble Beach or at the Zenbo house actually yeah. is kind of like the Agera platform or the Regera platform. It's a massive leap. Or like Yesco. Or even, yeah, maybe it's even like, to the Yesco, well, yeah. The, the new car is, is a game changer. You know, the TSRS is effectively the ultimate version of the first gen Zenvo, sure. if you will. You had a few different iterations. You had, you could say the ST1, then the TS, R, which was effectively the track car, then the TSRS, and they also have the TSR GT. So if you don't want the Wiggly Wing, have you ever seen the demo of the Wiggly Wing? I have, but I'd like to see it again. Do it again? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I can't imagine getting this car without the centripetal wing because that's kind of what makes the design language. Not like everything else isn't insane, but as a differentiating factor from any other car in the world, there's nothing that does this. So that's the air brake. Yep. I mean, look at that. Not only is it an air brake, or it can tilt backwards for slipperier, less drag. When you turn the steering wheel, it actually tilts to the side to provide more downforce on the proper tire to make sure you can get around the corner as fast as possible. So and it just looks so cool. <laughs> it looks cool, and you know when it comes to cars like this. So scientifically, this... And that was a Huracan. That's definitely a Huracan. Scientifically, independently, this increases your cornering top speed by around 2%. Not Zenvo's words. Zenvo's words are actually one and a half percent. It's it's about two percent in theory. Now, when you're driving a car that has 1,360 horsepower, <laughs> if you're going flat out through a corner enough that two percent faster is what you're after, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It, you've kind it's of lost crazy, the plot. but in the racing world, you'll take every percent you, you can would, get. You if, if Porsche's charging you. $17,000 to drop 24 pounds on magnesium wheels. The extra 2% yes. might actually be helpful. Yeah, 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 for sure. I, I find it funny because at the end of the day, it's it's like to me, the, the air brake flaps on the Huayra. Yep. It's like, whether these are actually relevant isn't, it's the fact that they, it's the fact that they are that level of engineering. 100%. Even if you're not gonna make use of it, it's the fact that it can do it. It it's just looks kind cool. Of, yeah. And part of these cars, is about them looking and feeling cool. And from a look standpoint, this is, look at that. <laughs> a we visually cool element, having that see-through there, but as you can see, it <laughs> likes to collect stones. Yeah, just a few. I imagine this is uh, full topaz up, or? It is, it's got full topaz paint protection film from England. It's, isn't it weird having a UK plate here? It's pretty cool. It's left-hand drive. People ask me why as a Brit I bought it left-hand drive, because they can make it right-hand drive. I went left because I knew I would drive it around Europe. I've done a few tours in Germany and Croatia, and I'd drive it around America. Yeah, yeah and he knew he was gonna let me drive it, and if it was right-hand yeah. drive, it wouldn't go well. Talking about <laughs> Yeah, so this He's is what, cool. Thor's hammer? Literally, Thor's hammer, the idea, the Danish, like, history, let's say, the linking back. In fact, Aurora, the new car's engine, is called Mul Mulnia, which means Thor's hammer. Gotcha. But in the case of this, obviously the shape of the Zembo crest and logo itself, is yeah, represented cool. in the shape of the key, which you kind of insert, and you get that sense of occasion when you pop it in. And then we've got the Inconel exhaust that shoots massive flames. They I love that. how it's 
already started to change colors. I'm wondering, was it all one color before? And as it's shot flames, it's starting to turn purple so. and blue? Probably. I so. But I actually opted for the quieter exhaust. Yeah. And now I think we're going to have to put a louder one on. But <laughs> it, it's a funny story. Obviously, my car, we were, it was really interesting to do the homologation processes in the UK and in Germany. So this car is fully road legal everywhere. You no, know, it's been through all of those, those, um, what do you call it? Like, different silly things like they have to measure the height of everything and the sound and all this that and the other stepping in yeah let's do it the all right so this time since i've been in the car before i actually know where the door handles are which are hidden back here these little buttons and then we've got the gorgeous two-tone interior and not two-tone in terms of two different colors but literally two different color schemes we've got the lime green for the driver's seat and then we've got the purple to match the exterior on the passenger seat, and then the blue schmoo. <laughs> <laughs> the asymmetrical design, I decided to go for that. I know some people will hate it, but I, I like that focus on the driver. You know, the car is so visually dramatic in the purple with the lime green. So we went for the matching green inside. And it was so fun, that process, and how involving it is with the designers at Zenvo to create the color scheme, every option. You know, down to the pinstripe elements painted on the yeah, carbon of the dash, cool. down to the anodized um, air conditioning vent surrounds, all of those details, being able to customize everything. I mean, even if you look at the seats, through the perforation on that hexagonal pattern, mm -hmm. it's got the, yeah. the backing leather again, and you'll spot hexagon shapes everywhere. I mean, it's like the yeah. ultimate Joker mobile. <laughs> I guess it's been nicknamed that a few times. <laughs> all right, let's do this. Tim has just informed me that this is the first time he's been in the passenger seat of his car without a Zenvo driver or employee behind Literally, the wheel. Literally, the only time I've ever been in this seat on the move has been with Alberto, one of the Zembo team driving. Well, thank you for this opportunity, <laughs> seriously. And I will uh, not make you shall regret I, it. Shall I say nothing and see if you can work out the whole process? To start? Yeah, yeah, let's try that. <laughs> because I don't know how to start it, so we'll figure we, it out. The ignition on was all good. Okay. I didn't even know putting the key in there did have the ignition go on, so let's see. Yeah. We're running. All right. AC absolutely blasting, sorry about that. No problem. So the confusing one is actually the park brake park brake is that switch which you have to manually turn off okay that is good to know simple that easy yeah no that's actually not that bad <laughs> i wouldn't have figured out the parking brake thing no, probably because the, the, every car the other complicated one is when you stop it neutral and park brake back on sure because it's not all so we're in race mode max power mode you go full on <laughs> we'll start it in road mode just to try and, and IQ put it into is, iq yeah. mode perfect yeah now does this automatically go down or i'm sure first? it would do but uh does this have an automatic mode of any kind no, or no you, uh, See, that's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Um, obviously, it will automatically downshift itself. It's not going to... Okay, lock it's not going to stall out. Yeah. Um, I think the Solus GT that was happening on the original test drives of the okay. car. Interesting. But yeah. That is a nice feature to have. Well, the downshifts are smooth. You say that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, when you're going softly. So you were saying... Basically, drive it in road mode like an Aventador or a you know, E46 M3 yeah, SMG so where you, you set off a bit. You know, things like the R8s, the Aston Vantages, 177, the Lexus LFA, all those cars that have those lightweight single clutch gearboxes. Yeah. In road mode, you drive it like that. And you're actually doing a very smooth job of this, it has to be said. Um, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, have a little bit of experience behind the wheel of cars like that. but. You know, when you drive it like this, I think what surprises me is that it's actually quite easy going. Yeah, like no, like it feels pretty civilized, actually. Like, it's a big car. I'm sure, I don't have to put the words in your mouth, but it feels like a big thing on the road. Yeah, it's 100%. Not, it's but, not nimble like your 600 LT. But it's not as... I think maybe just the view over the front hood makes it feel easier to drive. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like it eats the entire road, like an Aventador SVJ or something, where you <laughs> kind of can't see what the heck is going on. Yeah have to trust that it has a bunch of grip so iq mode even though it sounds like it would have variable power it's always just under 800 yeah okay yeah, gotcha. i think so i, I wasn't sure if it was like a choose your power based on how much throttle you're giving it I, that actually makes no sense though because because then it would just then be it would just power. Power. <laughs> that, that's kind of what the throttle pedal yeah, does yeah exactly <laughs> never mind i just literally said exactly what an accelerator pedal is <laughs> you can choose your power but no, I mean, the, the thing is, in pretty much any circumstance, 800 horsepower is going to Yeah, 100%. And especially in a road like this, there's zero, zero reason to do anything. But then 
put it into race that just changes the gearbox? Yep, what about the post? suspension or nope, just the steering. gearbox? It's literally just the gearbox. I feel like the steering's a little lighter than I was expecting. Okay. Downshift is amazing. Yeah, no, the downshift is pretty awesome. This road I picked because it's empty, but it is not a Zenbo road. It's very, very tight and twisty, and with 1177 horsepower and it not being my car, it's not really the place to, <laughs> to open it up much, but we'll find a place with a straighter section to give it some beans. Give it some beans a little bit. But yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to drive, actually. Wow, that gearbox is crazy. Have you had this on the track? No, I haven't. I haven't tracked it. And I track a lot of my cars, like at the Nurburgring. Uh huh. I'm not normally afraid of it. I am extremely conscious of the value of this. A hundred percent. Like people ask me why I haven't quite often, and it's it's literally because if somebody else goes into me, I'm that's the stuff. biggest thing, particularly like, I, with the Nurburgring. There's yeah. people everywhere. Don't get me wrong, I don't like taking risks with the GT Black Series or whatever else, but they are, let's say, at least replaceable. Yeah. You can buy another one, you can repair it, whatever happens. This is kind of, if I want another one, i got to wait another year and a half, two years. And how many total TSRSs have they made? They've built four. The oh, next wow. three are in build. I think one of them is basically finished. And of the four, are any of them owned by Zenbo or four customer cars? Uh, one one yours? is owned by Zenbo. Okay, so three one. customer cars. Wow. Yeah, so the, the red one that I, was the first one I ever filmed, that's a customer in Denmark. Yeah. The white one now belongs to a customer in Sweden. Obviously, this one is mine, mine from the UK. And then the blue one belongs to the factory, which they'll keep. And then, I'm not sure I should fully disclose where the next three are going, but fair enough, to yeah. new, new countries that they haven't yet Very cool. to. Have like, multiple of them ever been together in one location? No, so that's one of the things I'm super excited about happening next year, especially as Zembo as a brand establish themselves more and really grow in position in the, in the hypercar segment. It's going to be so fun to be part of that like, community in the first Zembo rally. Like, imagine the first oh, Zembo wow. rally, the first time you have multiple of these yeah. on the road together. We actually, at Car Week last year, white and blue TSRSs were both there. Uh -huh. So I drove the blue one and they drove the white one to Exotics on Broadway, which was really cool to have the two cars on the road together. Yeah. I think it was the first time the two TSRSs had even really been driven together. Uh, it would be amazing though to pull all four together somehow now. That would be insane. Yeah, so the reason for the 14 on my number plates is that this is... <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> it's say again, what's the 14? It's <laughs> the 14 Zembo. It's chassis number 14. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, That's pretty cool. So I'd give a nod to that, but obviously... What was the 44? There was a... I think one of the press cars said 4-4 four, four on it. Could just... Wait. Yeah, maybe it was just a random number. Yeah, must be a random number. Oh, that's bumpy. <laughs> <laughs> the suspension is definitely geared It's to pretty firm. Something that's not quite so... Uh, yeah, a smoother road, I'm sure. <laughs> is pretty darn cool. It's funny driving a car where you can't see behind you whatsoever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's definitely intimidating to say the least. So normally you would be able to. Yeah, <laughs> so it's got a uh, camera system. Yeah, so this is normally your camera on the back. It's okay, gotcha. People have been pulling out of the way of the car for the most part on this windy road. Tim was talking about the fact that pretty much no one out here knows what it is, yeah. but obviously the second you see it, even if you don't know what brand it is, it's clear that it's ridiculous, it's expensive, yeah. and it's fast. So yeah, you can tell the traction control is like serious. Yeah, yeah it, I mean, it was has like to be. very much on the gas, and it was like, okay, hold on, yeah, we're not gonna do that right now. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're on Cup 2s, they're fairly sticky, they're yeah. a bit warm when it's a hot day, but still, but it's, it's a lot of power for yeah. two wheels. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, the gearbox is absolutely ridiculous. It's the big part of the experience, right? 100%. It's, it's almost like it's unpredictable, which makes it exciting. Yeah. Like, I don't know when you're going to shift, but I do know that it's going to be... Oh my gosh. It actually, yeah, changes in intensity. You're not quite sure whether it's going to be a huge kick in the back or a slight kick in the back. 
but that, that's which is fun. Second. At the end of the day, if you're on track or driving in a performance way, yeah, you're not you, really doing first you, or second. You're gonna do that to get onto the track out of the pits, and that's yeah. it. video.